This is the Mark V drum carter, and I'm sending it just as, as you see it here. It has the manual, and inside the manual, near the back page, is a uh, little, yeah, there it is, is a hex wrench for adjustments, and it'll show, you'll, you'll be able to figure out by reading the manual how to adjust it. Uh, once you get it set for the way you like it, and it should be set right now for most wolves, um, it'll just stay until you set it again. I think in the last 30 years I've only adjusted it one time. Okay, the other thing that's coming with it is the Bat Picker, uh, which is a like an oversized stainless steel knitting needle with a wooden handle. I got originally got two of these with the machine, and I can't find the other one, but uh, one is really all you need, and I think you'll find it's one of the handiest tools ever for one of these carters or any other carter. Okay. Uh, the machine is clamped to the table because it will slide. And it needs to be by the table edge because the handle drops down below the table. Uh, it does stick out far enough where you're not going to whack your knuckles against the table when you turn the handle. Uh, but you will see that there's two little Ashford uh, clamps that I'm sending with it. They ought to be perfectly adequate for most tables. Okay, the other parts of the carter are the small drum. And right there, the wood part, right that's the infeed table. Then at the top is the brush attachment and you can flip it over when you're taking the bat off and you'll see the large drum It's where your carding takes place and you can flip the brush over onto the carter just let it because it's heavy the weight itself will help push the wool down into the big drum okay on this side is the you can see the pulleys and the belt uh, in all my time, I've never had to change the belt. It should be just fine for I don't know how much longer. And I would imagine you could replace it easy enough at an auto parts store. When it's time to card, you want to make sure that your fiber is well separated. Pull it apart just vigorously. If you have it in the lock form, yeah, just pull it apart. You want to have it as loose and as cloudy and as aired out as it gets because when you're carding it's going to line it up but it's going to have nice crossing fibers so that you'll be able to spin a beautiful woolen yarn. Okay, now when you're ready and you've got your fiber all prepared you want to flip the brush over on top of the big drum and then feed in a little fiber at a time right up the middle and turn the handle just and if the machine drags, then you're feeding too much at a time. So just feed a little bit at a time, let it wind on, and let it wind on. And the, you want to kind of put it towards the middle of the drum so that it doesn't get tangled around the uh, outside of the drums and the attachments. So just keep going and put as much wool on as you can until it starts to wind around the small drum. You'll know your carter is full when you see all the fiber at the top of the big drum and the it's starting to leave fibers on the small drum. Uh, once you get to that point, you really can't put too much more on it. Uh, so at that point, just consider yourself done for this bat. Uh, and then flip the brush in the other direction and we'll talk about taking the bat off. Okay, when you're finished, you'll want to roll your bat uh, handle back up so you see the metal thing, metal groove. Okay, and then flip your brush up. Which is right there. Yep. Flip the brush back up and that'll help hold the drum while you pick the bat off. And then using that big stainless steel picker, go in with a point and lift, lift, lift it all straight up till it separates and it's easy if you do it a little bit at a time. 
that's all right, just keep going. Lift it all the way up. Just pull it all the way up till it separates. Up, up, up. There you go. Okay. And then if there's any left in the groove, we'll go back and pick it out of the groove and pull it up and forward or up and back, either one. Okay. Okay, when you're ready to take the bat off the carter, uh, move the brush out of the way and then just using your hands, gradually work the bat off. And you can use the picker dealy bob or a knitting needle to get the fiber with it. Let it roll back up. Pick it almost straight up and off. Straight up and off. And eventually you'll get to the end. I'm getting there. Now, I think I, what I want to do is run this back through again. So I'm not going to worry about getting all of the fiber this time. But I will pick out some of it. This is where a smaller knitting needle comes in here. It's just not the best pad in the world, but okay. So there's what you end up with. And you can see there's still some places on here that need to be recorded. So what we'll do is we'll run this back through. Okay. It's always a good idea to card your fiber twice. It'll come out so much better if you do. So what I do is take the bat and divide it in half, uh, just pulling it down the middle and make two pieces out of it, or three, or whatever. And then I'm gonna run it back through by putting the one end of it, and putting the brush back on, and just let it pull itself through. You're not gonna, you're not gonna feed it, you're just gonna guide it so that it pulls up over the edge. Yeah, not too much because that's gonna jam up. Okay, go, 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 go. Okay, so you want to run it back through. Let's do the half. Okay, after the first half, I've decided to blend some alpaca in with it. So I'm going to take my alpaca, which is all pulled apart, uh, like it's been through the picker, and I'm going to go ahead and feed it, just like I did the fiber before. And this will make a lovely blend. So the drum carter can be used as a blender too. Now there's actually two ways that you can do the fiber through this carter. The other way to blend the fiber is to let it pull out of your hand onto the large drum itself. Uh, just do a little bit here and there and let it gently pull out of your hand. And it'll be brushed in at the bottom. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to put the rest of the alpaca on there and let it feed on. And it, since it's hairy, it does tend to stick to the small brush, but at this point, don't worry about that. But then we're just going to go ahead and run the other half of the row thing that we made right through. And you might want to splay that out with your fingers so it's wider when you're letting it go through. There you go. Splay it out wide. And you might have to pull it back a little bit because it tends to pull on too much at a time. But you don't want to hold the fiber while you're letting it go through. Just splay it out, maybe tear it back, and then let it pull it on its own. There you go. Good. And then just run it around a couple more times, just a good measure, pushing the brush down with your hand. Or you could also use another type of soft brush and let it burnish that fiber in. There you go. Okay, and then when we're done with this, we're going to lift the bat again. Lift the brush to help. 
hold it. Otherwise, you've got to get your hip against the handle. Pick it up. If you do an inch at a time, it's much easier when you've got a big full bat on here. Now, I would probably run this back through one more time to get an excellent blend, but you'd be sitting here all day watching this work. So I'm going to show you how I take my bat off the final time. Okay, the way I like to take off my final bat is kind of like taking it off a blending board. I get two steak sticks. These are about a three, three eighths of an inch. And I come in and I grab fiber and I start rolling it. And then I just roll the fiber off. And then when I get down too far or out of camera view, whichever you want to look at, pull up the brush a little bit and then just roll gently, softly. But this does seem to take the fiber off very easily. You're going to end up with a really nice roll egg. Except I left the brush on and now I've got a mess. So turn your handle backwards, roll. This is sort of not the way that most people do it, but it does tend to bring the fiber off. But you don't want to roll it too tight or you'll never be able to spin it. And you can see how it picks up most of the fiber off of the drum. And then just keep rolling, rolling, rolling until you get the rest of it. And there you have your ready to spin little bat roll leg. Then you slide out one of the sticks. Of course, I didn't get the right one. And then you slide out the other one. And you have a little bat which you can pull out and spin from the end. Now most people would just pull the bat off and fold it over and then roll it up, but this way it's ready to spin and you can just go and go and go.